Hi everyone, welcome to Ask an Armor. My name is Kia and today I'll be going over the basics of how an Epe circuitry works. If you're already aware of this or just want to see repairs, go ahead and jump directly to those videos. As a disclaimer, I'm not a formally trained electrician, I'm just somebody who's worked on fencing equipment for a while and read the FIE rules and regulations way too many times. Luckily, you don't need to have formal training because most of this is pretty straightforward. Now, when I'm working on an EPE, I always find it's helpful to have a general idea of the circuitry involved. This means I can more easily diagnose problems as I can just sort of tell where the circuit might be breaking, as opposed to simply following a checklist without any sort of understanding of why a problem leads to the outcome I'm seeing. And while some problems are really obvious and have basic solutions, other times it's not so easy, so having this general sense of what should be going on and a general sense of how it could change based on something else happening makes it a lot easier to do my job. Before I begin, it's helpful to know some background. A very basic circuit is a circle. It is off when the circle is broken and the flow of electrons is interrupted, and on when the circle is continuous. Things can be added into the circle to create opportunities to break or complete it, such as switches. You can see here that this one is open and this one is closed. And you can also add things to take advantage of the energy from the electrons that are flowing through the circle when it is complete, such as a light. Again, we have our light is off here in the open circuit, and it is on here when it is closed and the electrons can flow through it completely. In this very simple system, there are only these two possible outcomes. EPEs operate in exactly the same way as the basic circuit I just described, which makes them the second easiest of the circuitries to work on. This means that the tip button acts exactly the same as the switch. When it is up and the circuit is open, there's no light. When you depress it, the circuit is closed and the light goes on. This is why there's only one light that goes off in Epe, regardless of where you hit, unless it's on your opponent's bell guard or a grounded piece, which I'll get to in a second. But for an Epe circuit, the signal originates in the scoring machine, travels through the reel and your body cord into one wire in your Epe, through the tip, which you can see here I've represented as the same switch type as in the basic circuit, back along the other wire once the circuit is complete, through the body cord, your, the second wire, through the reel, the second wire, and back into the scoring machine. And if you look carefully at the Epe wire, you can see that there are the two wire ends housed in the cap here. And when the contact spring touches these, it completes the circuit. Nice and easy. To prevent the system from scoring when the bell guard is struck, the bell guard itself is grounded. This in turn ensures that the system can't see the bell guard as target. So knowing this can give you a possible clue about what may be wrong if your bell guard does go off during initial checks. The metal piece are grounded separately to the scoring machine for the same reason, so that the system can just recognize that any hit within that area is not going to be designated valid. But just because you can doesn't mean you should go hitting these pieces, because that's really not good for them and makes armorers like myself cringe. Now I won't go into how to diagnose an epee here, because I do that in much greater detail in other videos. However, I hope you can see how just having this basic understanding of the circuitry can lead to quicker and easier diagnoses. As an example, if your EPE is failing to go off at all, you know that the circuit is failing to complete, so you can start looking for possible reasons why this may be happening. So that's a very high level overview of how an EPE works. I've linked the FIE manual below as usual for anybody who wants to go into a deeper dive of what's required and how it works. But for the most part, this is the level of understanding that I use and that I teach whenever I'm showing somebody how to get into Armory. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, if you have any questions, comments, or other topics you'd like me to cover, let me know down below. See you in the next one, bye!